welcome to episode 102 of our Family Travel Australia series. This week we wrap up all the highlights and stats from our awesome six week road trip through the Red Centre following the Explorer's Way from Adelaide to Darwin. We show you around our secluded tropical oasis in Howard Springs, located an easy 30 minutes from the city, and share our tips on the best free experience in the heart of Darwin. Plus, we showcase the number one attraction to immerse yourself in Darwin's history, culture, and top experiences, and we're giving you the chance to win our fantastic guidebook to the Explorer's Way. Be sure to subscribe and join us for all of the adventure. How good is this? It is known as the greatest road trip in Australia. I think we would have to totally agree I with that. I agree with that, yeah. <laughs> what an incredible time we've had. It's taken us six weeks since we left Adelaide to make it finally here to Darwin, the tropics. So good. Oh, so warm. I mean, the average winter temperature is 32 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, it took about 4,000 kilometers of driving. If you actually did the drive from Adelaide to Darwin in one stint, it's just over 3,000 kilometers. Right. Wow. So we deviated a little bit, which made this Explorer Way all that much better. And haven't we had some incredible oh, highlights? It's just, amazing. Yeah. So good. Okay, so many highlights and lots of good stats we wanted to share with you. So we've written them down so we didn't miss anything. Okay. Okay, six weeks in total, we stayed at Peterborough, Corn, the Glendambo Roadhouse and Coober Pedy, all in South Australia. And then we crossed the border into the Northern Territory and we stayed at the Colgara Roadhouse, oh, Alice Springs, yeah. Uluru, Curtin Springs. Curtin Springs, Kings Creek Station, Devil's Marbles, Dally Waters, Mataranka, Edith Falls and now here we are at Howard Springs just outside of Darwin. Actually this really hidden gem in Howard Springs. We are going to cover and Ooh. tell you all about that following this. Yeah, awesome. Uh -huh. Okay, so what that meant was we stayed at three free camps, yes. two road houses, two hip camp properties, two station stays, four caravan parks, one conservation reserve, one crazy, quirky, we'll never forget pub, <laughs> and one national park. How awesome is that? It is truly incredible. It's actually a really good range of experiences mm. as far as camping goes. Yes. Yeah, we got to experience it all. Yeah, and meet awesome people at every place that we stay. Yeah, and that was not only from the campers, that was from the publicans, you know, the friendly staff, mm -hmm. those smiling faces. Yeah. Everyone we met everywhere along the road was awesome. Yep. Yeah, no problems. Okay. Highlights, okay. experiences, Cooper Pedy, Noble Tours with Aaron. That is definitely one of the best mm. uh, guided tours as far as value for money, go, uh, quick witted right. humour. You, you know, just really likable tour guide. Really good 
Aussie charm. Yep. Wasn't that great? Yeah, and a great overview mm. of Kuba PD and getting to experience some things that you wouldn't be able to had you not been on Aaron's tour. So Yes, Kuba yep. PD, Aaron's tour on top of your list. Yeah, okay. Mm. Uluru. Amazing. Field of light experience. Yeah. We are so fortunate that we were able to get tickets because it was very busy out there. It was booked out. We actually had to keep backtracking our dates to try and find a date that we could yep. you know get out there just to experience that i mean you're in the middle of central australia mm. you know on the middle of the earth and there is an art installation with fifty thousand hand-blown glass bulbs yeah that are solar powered breathtaking it was it was really mm. really beautiful mm -hmm. okay completing the king's canyon rim walk i'm so proud of jasper Oh, well, you know. all of us, I think. Well, <laughs> yes, I know, but you know, like he, it's a six kilometre yeah. return uh, walk, or as he said, well, it's close to seven kilometres, Dad, if you include where you park the car. Yeah, that's true. Which is true. Uh, I mean, we, we did use some, some good old uh, fashioned bribery, uh, which we would recommend if you're a parent and you've got kids and you want to do this walk. Yeah. But he just, he loved it and he thrived and it was an awesome experience to share with our Tasmanian friends as well. Yes. Beautiful. And that really made us think, okay, where to next? Where can we go and yeah. hike? What other amazing natural treasures can we go yeah. and explore? Re really reignited yep. our enjoyment of the hike and, and, and that's right, getting out and doing this as a family. Yeah. Okay, now totally the opposite end of the scale to uh, being outdoors and hiking and being healthy. Dally Waters Pub. <laughs> wow, I tell you what, I did refer to it as the barley of the bush, and I and I mean no offence for, for patrons or, or the proprietor here. It really was a jumping Aussie outback experience, mm -hmm. uh, and I think because we had come through freezing temperatures, it was <sighs> our first real top end experience where we went. Oh, 34 degrees. We forgot what that felt like. A bit yes. of sun kiss, swimming in a pool, drinking beers and mm -hmm. <laughs> having a, a roaring time that night, dancing till we couldn't dance anymore for like four hours. Awesome experience. Yeah, yeah, definitely mm. a must do on this drive journey, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Okay, Bitter Springs, Mataranka. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. We never wanted to leave. In fact, we're still talking about how awesome Bitter Springs was and working out how we can get back there. Look, I love the overhead drain shot of Bitter mm. Springs. Uh, it really perfectly portrays that Amazonian feel with mm. that turquoise crystal clear water yeah. and then turn it up to 34 degrees Celsius in. Wow. It is so wow and mm. we just love Bitter Springs. And I think for me, it's one of those places that, you know, you see all of these amazing places around the world on Instagram and postcards and you wonder whether they actually exist or whether they've just been photoshopped. Yes. Bitter Springs is one of those places. It is absolutely stunning. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Coldest temperature. Minus one degrees overnight when we stayed at Curtin Springs Station, which is about a hundred kilometres from Uluru. I remember drawing on the uh, Hilux bonnet in the ice. It was that cold. It was freezing. Unbelievable. We got in at about 11 a.m. that day to the station to camp overnight and the kids lit the campfire straight away, shows how cold they were, and kept it burning until we all went to bed that night. Fantastic. So cold. Okay, hottest temperature, obviously, <laughs> here. Getting into Howard Springs in Darwin, and we're averaging 32, 34 degree mm -hmm. days. Hottest day we've had so far this week's 36 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. Gotta Pretty love good. that humidity too. It got down to 16 degrees this morning, yes. which is the coldest, I think, that they would get during this, uh, you know, winter season. Or really, they only have two seasons, and mm. that's dry and wet. It's pretty well summer all year round. Mm. Awesome. Mm. Okay, we only had two days of rain the entire six weeks. So that was leaving Peterborough. Oh my God, it, it was torrential. Yeah. That night going oh. over to see the trains, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, Did anyone read yes it was with only one umbrella. <laughs> 
Well, that was to cover the camera man and gear, of course. Yes, okay. And the other rainy day was leaving Coober Pedy and it rained all day and we crossed mm. the border into the Northern Territory staying at the Colgara Roadhouse. It was relentless. In fact, that's the only experience that we didn't get to do because of the weather and that was the Painted Desert. Oh, yes. So we, I so wanted to do yeah, that. Yeah, we've still got that on a list of, of revisits. Yes, mm. good point. Okay, best meal? Outback barbecue at Kings Canyon Resort. So good. We went back the next night. Yes. And it was still just as good. Yep. Incredible chef, incredible acoustic guitarist, incredible sunset, just beautiful experience. Yeah, awesome. Fresh yeah. food, worth the drive if you're mm. staying at Kings Creek Station like we were. It's funny, you know, you get out to these places and it's $35, $40 for a meal. And if the meal's bad, then it's the worst value yeah, ever. Yeah, exactly. And if the meal's fantastic... You go back again. It's so true, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that was a good meal. I, my mouth is watering thinking about that meal. Okay, cheapest fuel. Do you remember? Was, yeah, the day we left Adelaide. Yes. <laughs> it's twenty-eight thereabouts. Yep, yep, it sure was. Most expensive fuel. Uluru. Yeah. Yeah, anywhere along there, Curtin Springs, Uluru, El Dunder Roadhouse were all over $2 a litre. Yep. And Uluru was $2 and seven cents thereabouts it was. yeah it was um, and Earl Dunder because we back and forth a little bit we watched over the period of a couple of yeah weeks yeah that price just continue to rise yeah, and rise $2, and rise two dollars two two dollars four that's yeah. right yeah, yeah. ouch mm. okay let's talk about phone service we're both with Telstra now we had fairly good service from leaving Adelaide all the way to Alice Springs, even out mm -hmm. at Uluru, yep, even great. out at Kings Canyon. We did use our self I go booster to boost the signal in both of those locations, but the reception was excellent considering. Yeah, absolutely. It was really when we got north of Alice Springs up through here to Darwin that we had near to zero reception mm. occasionally like at Dally Waters you know you'd have a 4G with three bars of service and it gosh, lies yeah you'd be lucky <laughs> if you could send and receive you know texts yep. and things yep. you know frequently it was really sketchy yeah that's right yeah, yeah yeah definitely had to pick your times we found um you know if we needed to upload an episode we'd do it overnight when hopefully there was more bandwidth or less people using it took us two and a half days to upload the episode that was around devil's marbles dally waters and mataranka yeah unbelievable craziness okay just good to know all right favorite experiences what was your favorite experience Okay, it would have to be Edith Falls. Mm. Yeah, Maybe. I just think as a whole package, the waterfalls, the campground, mm. the people, mm. the live music, pizza night. All of it. Loved it. Amazing. Yeah, yeah it, um, that real... Okay, guys, this is the Northern Territory. Yes, this yes. is the topic. When you're sitting in a rock pool with the waterfall behind you and crystal clear water. And postcard perfect yes. images yeah wow. amazing okay I asked Jasper this morning and I'm sure you can guess he said his favorite experience was staying at Peterborough and going to the Steamtown light and sound show oh look in its day it was the epicenter of trains in Australia yeah. and so it has got an incredible history and such a beautifully presented experience for the whole family mm. oh for yeah. such a small rural town as well amazing yeah, yeah. okay mine Uluru yeah and again it just everything about the experience of being out there from staying in the overflow campground which I absolutely loved so good the colors of nature out there the red dirt and the crisp blue sky and then getting out to Katajuta and the mm. orange, the burnt orange of the cliff walls, everything about that experience, even the feel and how spiritual and magical it felt out there. I could go back and spend so much longer out there just being. We talked about things looking like they've been photoshopped. Mm. It was so crisp because it was, you know, winter and, and fairly cool every morning, mm. you know, zero, one, two, three degrees. 
that the sky is just so blue and the outline mm -hmm. of Uluru against that crispness is just incredible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. Nature is just spectacular out there, although mm -hmm. I think nature is spectacular everywhere in the Northern Territory. Yeah, this is uh, a remarkable landscape that ever's changing and constantly blowing us away. Yeah, mm. awesome. All right, so let's give this bad boy away. All right, all you have to do is leave a comment down below. All right, and I think to leave a comment, then you have to have a, been a subscriber or at least a subscribe now mm. and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, we've never said that, have we? <laughs> no, but this book could be yours. We're gonna just hit the random button and choose someone and we'll announce that in the next couple of weeks and on our socials as well. It is an awesome guide. Just leave a comment, let us know why you think you would love to do the Explorer mm. Way, the ultimate road trip. Mm. Fantastic. All right, okay, so that wraps up our wrap up of the Explorer Way. We're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna share with you this incredible little getaway, how it springs. Okay, here we are, Howard Springs Haven. It's proudly owned and operated by Christy and Clinton, their young family in Howard Springs, which is about 30 minutes out from the CBD. And if you are looking for a secluded tropical oasis that's away from the normal caravan park vibe, yeah, this, this is definitely is the place. The place. Mm. We absolutely love it here. It is a hip camp property, and there are a few hip camp properties scattered around the Darwin surround. Interestingly, mm. there are no caravan parks within the immediate Darwin city limits. So you mm. are further out anyway. Yep. We're about 30 minutes from the city here, 20 minutes from the local dump point as yep. well, which is great. And it's made a great base for us to get out and explore and experience all that Darwin has to offer. Now, Howard Springs is also known as the gateway to Kakadu and Litchfield National Park. So super excited for us to get out and experience mm -hmm. those as well. What I think is outstanding, besides the fact that you've got all of this space and these beautiful gardens that they have presented here, is that it is only $30 a night. Yes. Plus your hip camp booking fee, which is minimal. Uh, any of the other caravan parks that you stay at are $70 a night. Yeah, easily. And that's yep. right. And you have access to power and town water. Yep. You do need to be self-contained in that there are no bathroom facilities here. Mm -hmm. But the added bonus is, is that whilst Christy and Clint have a large, beautiful property, they only have two sites available. So you do feel secluded. It's quiet. Yeah. You have so much space. Jasper has been learning to play soccer because we have so much space here on our site, which is site number two. Another thing that I really love is that you can have a fire. Mm. So there's a fixed fire pit here and they also supply your first round of wood free of charge. Yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. They do little things here that make a big difference. Yeah. You are able to wander their beautiful yard, pick fresh fruit from their fruit trees. They've got a herb garden. They've also got some lovely chooks that free roam around the garden. And you can in fact buy some free range eggs from Christy and Clint as well. And on arrival, they supply you with a welcome pack. And we haven't seen this before. So a lovely letter Hi, welcoming you and giving you a bit of welcome a rundown on the property and the local Haven. area. Mm -hmm. Some great information booklets on what to see and do in and around Darwin and a container for us to be able to keep our food scraps and add it to their compost bin or as food for the chickens. I think that's it. It's their attention to detail and the little extras that you wouldn't get unless you had a hosted property like this. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, another thing they did was leave a note out for us that said, here's a pawpaw, leave it on the bench for the next three days until it turns yellow and enjoy. It will be delicious. I mean, it's a first for us. Yeah, a nice surprise to come home to. Mm -hmm. uh, they provide bins, recycling bins as well, which is another great feature of this property. And you can make use of their very refreshing plunge pool and their entertainment area as well. Yeah, look, Jasper and I both got in. In fact, uh, I think I had to let Jasper acclimatise for about 10 minutes before he actually got all the way in. But start of August, 36 degrees Celsius days. Mm -hmm. It is a refreshing and welcomed relief from this heat, that's for sure. Yeah. We are super close to shopping centres as well, 15 mm -hmm. minutes down the road, two major shopping centres with everything that you will need during your stay. And just around the corner here in Howard Springs is a local IGA, a bakery, post office, chemist, yep. doctor. So everything's very handy and easy to access. Okay, another highlight for being in this location is that Howard Springs Nature Reserve is only five minutes down the road. It actually has quite a rich history. It was the original water supply reserve for Darwin City. It also was home to the US and Australian Air Force units during the World Wars. And there is a great amount of interpretation around the wildlife. There's some man-made rock pools that you can swim in. And seasonally, they also offer free guided wildlife tours, both during the day and mm -hmm. wildlife spotting at night with a ranger. So something else to consider as another activity to do in your local area. Mm, the abundance of wildlife here in Howard Springs has blown us away. Waking up to the sounds of the birds has just been awesome. In mm. fact, they go all day long and well into the night. And being able to see black cockatoos right here in our mm. backyard has just been so good. I think that's it. They're a beautiful young family presenting a beautiful property. It truly is a no-brainer mm. if you want to have a secluded getaway still close enough to Darwin City. We have fallen in love with Darwin. Mm -hmm. How good is this? Okay, we're going to be bringing you the number one paid experience that you can do here. But first, we wanted to really share where we are here at Darwin Waterfront because it is the number one free experience. Yeah, this is a definite must do when you are in the city of Darwin. And whether you are traveling alone as a couple or a family like us, this place has something for everyone. Okay, what we love about this is that you can choose to do some paid activity here or just enjoy the saltwater lagoon behind us that is completely free and accessible. Mm -hmm. There are that many deck chairs, cabanas, yep. cushions, palm trees to sit under. There's actually more of that than there are people here. Yes. Uh, we're in an area called the Beach Club with a slogan that says endless summer. I love it. This is winter in the top end. It's amazing. Okay, we've got a top of 36 degrees Celsius today. So mm -hmm. the dry season really is the time to come between May and October yeah. to really be able to soak up this environment. Yeah. There is an aqua park that you can pay and play in. There's also a wave pool here. Yeah, which is like $8 and that gives you unlimited entry. So really good value if you enjoy the waves. Mm. We've really loved just swimming and splashing around in the saltwater lagoon. It is a safe swimming area. Mm -hmm. There are lifeguards on patrol as well. There's a sandy beach for the kids to be able to play on. 
There's also a wheelchair access yes. point as well. So yep. it is accessible for everyone. Yeah, it sure is. And then it is fringed by this incredible selection of cafes and restaurants mm. and boutiques as well. So you can do a spot of shopping too. Okay, the hot tip from us is to go and perch yourself up at Hot Tamale. Mm, yum. See, very good. Mexican restaurant, a couple of beers, watching all of the activity down on the lagoon. Mm -hmm. It is the best place to sit in town. Okay, there is also free parking, undercover, secure, for the first two hours. Or if you did come and spend the whole day, it's gonna cost you about $15 to park there. Yeah, look, and if a day's not enough, there are apartments as well as a couple yes. of hotels right here at the waterfront. So you could literally come here and stay and never move. <laughs> yes, that's true. Okay, for us, the number one paid experience is the big bus tour. Okay, this is a family operated business. They are in fact so successful that they're regarded as the number one bus tour company in the world. They're on four continents. They have about 20 versions of this experience around the world. And here in Darwin, it is just an absolute must to put on your list of activities. Yeah, look, not only does it give you a really great lay of the land mm. and you can experience different attractions that are on offer here, mm -hmm. it's also very cool. It is a double-decker open-air bus. And it's fully commentated mm. the entire way around. There are 12 stops and if you were to hop on the bus and stay for the whole loop, that will take you about one hour. Yeah. What we decided to do was do the whole loop, leaving from Darwin Waterfront, and then we chose a couple of spots to stop and actually check out. There are two types of tickets. Mm. There are a one-day ticket and also a two-day pass. Yeah, that's right. So for the one-day ticket, it's $38 for adults. Mm -hmm. Kids under five are free. Woohoo! Awesome. And the two-day ticket is $58 for adults, which is what we purchased. Mm. What's so great about it is you can literally hop on and hop off as much as you want in that ticket time frame. Yes, and doing the first day allowed us to really decide mm. how we wanted to plan out the next day and take in those attractions. Yeah. So we're gonna share with you a little bit of an itinerary of what we actually did to enjoy and take in the most of this very vibrant city. Yeah, awesome. Okay, our first port of call was Cullen Bay. Oh, I love this place. Yeah, it really is an exclusive residential marina. It's a private waterway that has a number of wonderful restaurants and cafes mm. that you can enjoy as well. Now look, Darwin is known to have the best sunsets in Australia and there are so many places that you can perch yourself to take in this incredibly beautiful experience. Mm. For us, Cullen Bay would be the choice. Yes, and what sets this spot apart from the others is that it has an incredibly green, grassy foreshore that is mm. just immaculately presented. You could roll up there with your picnic blanket, order some takeaway from one of the restaurants or cafes. Great idea sit, have a drink and watch that spectacular sunset. Or you can go a little bit further down and play along the beachfront mm. as well on yeah. the sandy beach shore. Okay, the other part of Cullen Bay is that it's the main ferry terminal mm. to get you across to Tiwi Islands. Yes. Now look, we're hoping to do this next week, so stay tuned for that and we hope we'll be able to bring you that experience as well. Okay, from Cullen Bay, we hopped back on our big bus tour and headed over to the Museum and Art Gallery of the Northern Territory. Awesome. And free. Free. Yes. Now, this is a great experience, not only for the adults, but for the kids as well. The way that they have laid out the displays and the exhibitions within the Museum and Art Gallery means that they are interactive and immersive no matter what age you are. Yeah, that's right. There's also a discovery activity centre within the museum that has scheduled activities that are free for the kids. So maybe phone ahead. If you've got a family and yeah. you want to engage the kids a little bit more, you'll be able to find out exactly what's on. Yeah. Okay, the highlight here is the massive saltwater crocodile named Sweetheart. Yeah, a little bit of a sad story for Sweetheart back in the 1970s, but quite amazing that he is on display. He's a five metre croc. Huge. And you can come and learn about Sweetheart's story and really get a good education on saltwater crocodiles mm. here in the top end. 
and it is the safest you are ever going to get to being that close to a saltwater crocodile. Yeah, definitely. Well. Okay, the other number one display here is Transformations. And this so beautifully displayed and presented. Yeah, I really love this and so did Jasper. Mm walking through the different displays and exhibits, looking at all of the mm. different wildlife and learning some really great information as well. And then once you pass through transformations, you come into the Cyclone Tracy exhibition, which I thought was so well done. Look, it's both confronting and moving. Mm. I think one of the parts that really got me was the sound booth. You go through one door, it closes, it's pitch black, and there are actual recordings of the cyclone as it was hitting Darwin, that you can stand in that booth and feel completely immersed mm. and really get an understanding of how horrifying that would have been to be in that experience. Mm. As you come out through the other side, all of the pictures and the artifacts on display, some of the bent structure, you can see that absolutely tore through here with such an incredible force. So. Mm. It is a little bit confronting, but an amazing exhibit to check out as well. Yeah, definitely. I love looking at the images before and after Cyclone Tracy. And now that we've been in Darwin for a short amount of time and going to some of these places, mm. it's been incredible to see how they've rebuilt the city. Okay, a couple of other things to check out here are the cafe. You can either sit in or out. If you sit outside, you can check out the beautiful lawns, the palm trees again, and Fanny Bay that fringes the harbour part of this area. Or you can sit inside in the aircon as well. Mm really fantastic. There's also a gift store if you wanted to pick up a couple of mementos to take home with you. We would suggest that you allow at least one hour to enjoy the museum and then if you're going to stay for lunch allow another hour. So two hours to enjoy the gallery museum and the cafe before you get back on the bus. Yeah great idea. Okay the big red bus rolls back up, we hop on and our next stop is to Stokes Hill Wharf. Okay, we absolutely love this precinct. And in fact, you'll want to make time to visit there at least two, maybe three times yeah. because of what's on offer here. The main attractions are the Royal Flying Doctor Service and the bombing of Darwin Museum. Mm. Now, we are yet to check those out. And I think the bombing of Darwin part of it may be a little bit too heavy for Jasper still being four. So I'll probably go and check that out by myself. But mm -hmm. right in front of that is something that we did get to enjoy last night as a family. And that was the Ferris wheel, the Skyline Ferris wheel. In fact, it is the largest portable Ferris wheel in Australia. And for a fairly inexpensive ticket price, it is so much fun to do. It runs all throughout the day as well. So you can pick your times and whether you want to capture that beautiful mm. sunset or ride it at night time when the 9,000 lights come on, it's pretty awesome to see. I think our tip would be to go just after sunset. So even like 15 or 20 minutes after the sun has actually gone down mm. because the red in the sky here is absolutely spectacular. Mm -hmm. And being completely surrounded by water because you're out on the end of a pier makes it all that much more spectacular. Yep. Stokes Hill Wharf is also an awesome place to stop and get off the bus and enjoy a seafood lunch. Mm. There's actually a number of different cuisines that are on offer here. I mean, Darwin is 120,000 people and it is regarded as one of the most culturally diverse cities in Australia. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that when you see the different restaurants and the food that is on offer here, yeah. that is world class. Yeah, awesome. Mm. We actually enjoyed lunch here when we were doing our bus tour mm -hmm. and then after the Ferris wheel we ended up having dinner here as well to enjoy the end of that sunset. So a really wonderful experience and somewhere to revisit during your time here in Darwin. Yeah, definitely. Okay, our next stop on the Big Red Bus was back to the waterfront precinct to go and experience the World War II oil tunnels. This would have to be one of the most unique heritage sites mm. that you can access and visit here in Australia. Yeah, for sure. Mm. And the amount of interpretive signage and educational information throughout the tunnels mm. on their display boards was so good, giving mm -hmm. you a timeline of not only 
when and how they built these tunnels, but from Darwin in the very, very early days, right the way through the World Wars to now. Yes, and it's only $8.50 for adults mm -hmm. and it's $5.50 for kids. Being over five metres wide and tall and 172 metres in length, it's not until you're actually standing in there that you can grasp what an incredible engineering feat this was mm -hmm. to create these tunnels that they dug out by hand. That's so true. I mean, Jasper literally walked in and his jaw dropped and he said, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. It is a wonderful experience to do, particularly for kids as well. Yeah. I think the, the smaller they are, the more wow it probably looks as well. Yeah, and there's such a fascinating story that goes along with these tunnels. So it is well worth a visit and you're literally across the road from the waterfront here. Now with 12 different points for you to hop on and off on this tour, there is so much more to see and do mm -hmm. in Darwin. A couple of the other highlights is the mall and Crocosaurus Cove. Mm -hmm. There's also the main visitor information centre at that point as well. And Mindel Beach Markets. We went and enjoyed those and boy, wasn't that one of the largest markets we have ever been to. Oh, so good. The food on offer there was amazing. There was great entertainment as well and tons of market stalls for you to meander through and spend your dollars like we did. And of course, it's another great spot to stop and take in that famous Darwin sunset. Okay, so that wraps up our big bus tour of Darwin City. If you have only got limited time, a couple of days, this is definitely the number one way for you to get a good lay of the land, check out all the attractions and be chauffeured around. Yeah, awesome. Uh, there is so much to see and do here in Darwin. We have got lots more on our itinerary. So stay tuned for more awesome content from the top end coming your way in upcoming episodes. Markets, ladies and gentlemen. Say, Good on you, young fella. Say, thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much, eh? <laughs> thank you. Got the you. right idea there, ladies and gents. We are buskies here at Middle Beach Market. Eco Traveller, isn't that a good name? Okay, this is a new product that we'd heard about. Katie, looking after the pink jobs, was seeking out a product that was 100% environmentally friendly and she came across this proudly Australian made, Australian owned, and so another good reason why we thought we would give it a go. If it is something that interests you, then you can check out this product on our gear page, on our website, feelgoodfamily.com.au, and you'll also get a 10% discount. We are gonna road test it first though, so if you're not in a rush and you wanna see the review and how we actually think it goes, 
then hang out for that in a few weeks time. We ended up actually picking up what's called a bathroom bundle, which gives you a bit of a discount as far as extra product is concerned. This stuff's pretty cool. Uh, as well as being 100% environmentally friendly, you can use it to obviously clean your portable loo. You can use it as an air freshener. It smells a bit like bubble gum, if you like that smell. You can also use it to clean the floors and the showers and whatever else. So that comes in the kit and then the sachets. An important thing to know is that before you actually use it, because it actually has probiotics in it, you have to prime or clean out the previous products or anything that's in your cassette before you give this a go. So the first time you use it, you're gonna put 100 mils of this stuff here in, swish it around, give it at least 20 minutes, and then dump that out again. And then you start by adding a little bit of water and a sachet and you're away. They say that this kit gives you about three to four months of traveling. I mean, we're full time. I'm not sure how um, long we'll get out of it, but we'll update you with that as well. But look, it gets great rating from what we've read about and researched so far and being 100% environmentally friendly we can't wait to give it a go blue jobs thanks for watching please do like subscribe and share our channel and if you'd like more information on full-time rv travel and living visit our website thefeelgoodfamily.com.au there you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family, and happy trails. Is that your stomach? Nah. <laughs> it's it's funny because Do you know what? They looked really calm and then that one up the back mm -hmm. saw the weather mm -hmm. and got real stressed suddenly. What do you think that is? No, they were just having a fight over the um the worm. Oh okay, nothing to do with the weather then. Mm -mm. Oh okay, that's good. And Jasper's got something to share with us. Hello, uh, Hello. Are you a doctor? Yes, I sell all these kind of supplies. That's a kind of mask. Okay, so you just put it on like this. Mm -hmm. And right. you can breathe air through that that yeah. part. Great. And this is for splinters. Yeah, that comes in handy a lot on our travels. And these are for your ears. Oh, yeah, very good. And these are for your hands. If you're in a sticky situation, these are extra bags if you want to buy some stuff. These are my two band-aids and this is burn gel and also the kind of stuff you use to put gel on your cut. This is my supply doctor's book and all those band-aids, they are free. Those are seven dollars and those wow. are five dollars. Okay. That's one dollar. These are five dollars. Okay. Is and that each or for a pair? Uh, that's for a pair. And that is twenty dollars. Oh my goodness, that's a bit and rich. This is the thing I have to keep. Okay, that's so you know. Hey. That's an eye patch. Are you sure it's not called an iPad? You you can no, play like on this. that all day if you want. Arr. An iPad, isn't it? No, look. Without hey apps. Siri. Look. I'm done this is eyes. what it is. Ah, got it, an iPad for your eye. <laughs> okay. No Siri in that pad. Seven dollars, please. Very well added up. There you go. Seven dollars. Great. Oh, do I have to pack it myself? Oh, good. That's a bit better service. That's what I would expect for seven dollars. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. All the best with your future. Bye. Bye. Clint?
Christy, Ruby, and Jasper. <laughs> Get out of town. They've, They've got, got a Jasper. Jasper. As well. What? Jasper and Jasper. How many Jaspers is there? Two. <laughs> Boom. Uh, Isn't that awesome? Hey, there's a bluefish. <laughs> Where? Then with a funny hat on. Where? Just in front of me, look. His name a Jasper fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that rups. Oh, better not to that. Okay, so that rups. Sorry, do it again, Mars. Look at my hair. Okay, so that rups up. Rups up? Rups up? No, what did I say? Okay, so that rubs up, rubs up. Here we go. Okay, so that wraps up our big bus tour. Okay, here we are, Howard Springs Haven. It is a hip camp property, proudly presented and owned by Clint and Daisy, and we just love it. Who's Daisy? I don't know. What's her name? Christy. Christy. Sorry, Daisy. You're out of here. Christy's now Clint's new wife. <laughs> I wish I launched a rocket. Is that your dream? Wow. How does Dreamcatch actually work? Can you explain it. Okay, so the bad ones get caught in these little lines and good ones go through. That's pretty simple, really. That's an amazing, amazing little dream catcher, Jasper. Yeah. Where are we going to put it? Well, I thought it could be near my bed somewhere. Yeah, perfect, all right. Beautiful, Let's hang mate. It tonight before we go so today is the first time we're going to try this. One thing to know is that, oh yeah, while I'm wearing gloves, I, uh, I'm never worried about our own waste, I'm worried about other people's. I don't know why I just said that. Okay. <laughs>